Hey guys, starting something a little new, new series here. We are going to do um, a pour, an actual kind of, not a deep pour, but definitely doing a mold here, which is awesome. It's going to come out really cool. Um, I'm doing something different. I did do my video first, and now I'm just coming back behind and going to let you guys know what I did in it. So, have all of our supplies going to glove up here. I've got counterculture DIY artist resin. Um, I love their products. It's fantastic. The mold is actually from them too. I thought I'd do the flower molds. I thought I'd have enough resin, but turned out um, <laughs> when I poured the resin, I didn't have enough to do the flowers on this video. So I will do it in the next section of the video. So here I have the resin it's a two-part resin counterculture diy does put these seal caps on them which is nice because it does help keep the air out of your bottles so i'm just taking um actually a cricket weeding tool that i don't use for weeding vinyl and just popping that um, out and then i always put mine back in so this is part b b is going to be more fluid um, it's going to definitely come out a lot faster and these are a hundred ml cups and I'm pouring it into a bigger cup so that I can mix both parts. Uh, you do not want to weigh the resin. I have learned because part B is lighter than part A, but you need the same equivalent measurement of each. So Basically, I always measure into a silicone cup, and then if I can't fit it both parts into one cup, then I do pour into another cup to mix. So there was part B. I'm going to go ahead and seal up my bottle so that I can reuse it. You'll notice part B is a little bit yellow. That's typical. Nothing to be concerned about. I'm adding a lot of colorants into this resin this time, so... It, you're not going to notice that yellow whatsoever. It's going to fade itself out. Actually, after mixing part A in, you pretty much don't even notice it. It's crystal clear. So, mm -hmm. I have opened this one so much that, honestly, it's struggling to get it open again. But, I will get it. And it's tricky because you got gloves on. So, I do a fresh cup. I don't use the same cup that I did B in, just because if there was any leftover of B in the other silicone cup, I don't want it to mix with A and have our proportions off. A is much thicker. It takes a minute for it to settle, so that's why like, I kind of squeeze the cup and pop the cup down on the table so that it can settle, and then I add what I think will be the next. It is hard to end up with equivalent at the end. I always end up typically with a little bit more B. So knowing that, going into that, I try to make sure that I am adding a little extra A. Not much, just a smidge to each round so that it definitely goes out. Comes out even, more even. A is the hardener, so that's what's going to give you that hard finish. So that's one reason why it's a lot thicker, a little bit harder to work with, <laughs> things like that. So now we're going to pour A with B so that we can mix them. And I am trying to get every last drop out of the silicone cup. Of course, you're not going to get every, exactly every last drop, but definitely striving to get as much as I can out of there. Scraping my tool. This is a plastic stir stick that I'm using. That is also from Counterculture DIY. I love those. They've got some silicone ones, which are great as well. But honestly, I struggle to keep the silicone ones clean. So I like the plastic ones. They just seem to work better for me. Silicone ones are stronger and truthfully, for this stirring process would probably be better just because they are thicker and stronger. But again, I'm kind of a diehard for these plastic ones. So I just work with it. So it can be a little bit difficult. 
and you're going to see that I'm like stirring, mixing, trying to scrape all edges. I'll scrape the tool a few times just to try to make sure that we get as much of that resin mixed together evenly. It, it varies. I think each artist does things probably obviously a little different. I would say that I strive for about a three minute mix on a typical project. I don't know that I always hit that three minutes and sometimes I feel like it needs to go longer. So I do it more by look and feel. You're gonna feel that A starts to mix with it, B and become more palatable and not so thick. And you're gonna notice that you're not gonna have cloudy strings through it. It does still look very yellow because also, it doesn't help the silicone cup that I'm working in. is a little bit older cup, and so it has yellowed with age as well. doesn't change any effect of that cup in its use, but it does make the resin look yellow. So you'll notice I'm just scraping the edge of this so that we can make sure that we get that mixed well. I'm going to give my hand a rest because it does get tired. And go ahead and seal up our part A. You'll notice I have a little massage tape on top that basically marks my bottles. It helps me separate my medium viscosity from my thin viscosity so that I know what I'm grabbing at whatever time that I decide to do a project so that I make sure I get both the A and B of the right viscosity. Um, on that these ones that I am using is medium. I like that for the molds thin is Gonna be less thick medium is gonna have medium thickness. That's what you want to think about So thin is gonna drop all your micas or your glitters down to the bottom of your mold because it's so thin the weight of the glitter is gonna fall to the bottom whereas medium will help hold it up a little bit more um, they also have artist resin, which is their original. That's a fantastic one too. And it's definitely, I, I believe it's a little thicker than the medium. It's like a regular thickness, but I really enjoy the medium. So you'll see here, I'm pulling that tool up and I'm looking at the resin. It's allowing me to see, do I see little milky swirls in there or am I seeing clear results? And I really was seeing clear results. It's hard to see on the camera but pretty clear results, but I wanted to scrape the edge again, scrape my tool again, do a little stir just to make sure that we are fully mixed. So now we will um, start getting our color added and prepping our space to pour this. So I'm just pulling some tools together and I have this leveling table that I got Basically, it has a level in the center, and then it has four feet that you can change the size of height on them, and then they also can change angle as well if you needed a little more boost one way or another. And then the level in the center, as long as the bubble's in the center, that tells us we should be level. So I know I'm working on a level surface. It comes with a silicone cover so that you don't get the actual level and device dirty with resin you can clean the silicone off which is fantastic so moving those big bottles out of our way so that we can actually work and it's good to let the resin i wanted to make sure this stayed level since i pushed it back but um it's good to let your resin sit that allows any bubbles pesky bubbles to come to the surface start forming um, and pulling themselves up and here you'll see I'm still like debating okay I'm gonna do these coasters but um, I ultimately realized that that was not gonna probably work but that's okay um, and that's all part of the learning process as you go sometimes you go in with intention and then you come out and you go okay that did not work as I thought it would and that's okay so Basically, just prepping all my cups, um, making sure that I have a cup for every color that I'm going to use. These are 
Dispersion Colors by Counterculture DIY. I love them. They are super vibrant. You don't need a ton. They mix really well in the resin. Super pretty. I don't like to put them though in my silicone cups because they can stain the silicone cups. It's not a big deal, but it's just one of those things I'd rather not. So these are just plastic um, like bathroom cups. You could also get the cardboardy ones if you wanted or paper ones if you wanted. That's a piping tool. Um, you can get that in the cake section or on Amazon. I'll link um, that as well. So I'm putting that inside of a paper cup because I'm not going to mess the paper cup up with the resin. But basically, I'm not going to mix resin in there. But what I would do is fill it with resin. So... So basically, I made sure I had a cup for everything. I also have a couple micas there and an alcohol ink and an artist, uh, not an artist, an armor art white, which is like a sinker. So it will help give dimension to your resin. Do that a lot with blooms, which we will be doing. That will come in part two. You'll see that I do these flowers and some blooming work, which is really a lot of fun. I love doing coasters and blooms. You never know what you're going to get. And sometimes it's a win. Sometimes it's like, yeah, it's okay. It's not great, but it's okay. So just kind of varies. Still letting that resin sit a little bit. Let those bubbles come to the surface. That will allow us to pop those bubbles out of there. I don't stress over my bubbles a ton. Some artists do, and that's completely fine. But I found that if I don't stress about it, it in the end, it all works out for me. So it, it's stress that I didn't need. Using my counterculture DIY heat gun, it's just a little mini heat gun, popping some of those surface bubbles that did come up. Mixing just a little bit to bring some of the other bubbles that maybe didn't have a chance to move to come up. And that way we can begin getting this more mixed. I like to wipe my tool off on the edge of it so that when I'm pouring, now I can use my tool and it's not dripping everywhere. Of course, I need to move all my color inside of my cups. And I'm just pouring some resin in each cup. I'm eyeballing how much I'm using. It's not a science for me. It's just whatever feels right. I was trying to get these three about the same amount in each cup just so that when I do pour it um, the colors are pretty even as far as distribution of the amount of color that I have so and then making sure I pour for my other colorants and things that I'm doing the sinker for the armor art you don't need much resin for it so I used a small silicone cup white's not going to bother it so not worried about using it for the alcohol or for I had another mica that is not a ton of that I didn't want to use a ton of. So I use those really tiny cups that I've used for UV resin and the same goes over here for a mica powder because I really was intending to do blooms with the flowers and I was going to do this gold mica powder in the center for the center and then you'll see later on here that I go a complete different route. <laughs> so you have to adapt as you go along. And here I'm just trying to get basically every last drop. Know what resin wasted for me. I don't like to have waste. I use it where I can. It also makes your cleanup a lot easier because you don't have as much in the silicone cup to try to wipe out. Some artists will put those cups upside down and just let that cure. You can't do that for your first two cups that I poured A and B in separately because they will not cure. But you could for the big one. I find though my method with the uh, rubbing alcohol is just the easiest for me. So that has just been something that serves true for me. And I can always get my silicone cups cleaned the way that I want them clean. So, like I said, just getting every last bit that I can. Of course, I get it. I'm not getting every drop, but essentially trying to get every drop. 
And then we'll let these, I kind of let them sit for a second while I just move my things around. I don't clean the cups right away. That's all at the end. These dispersion colors do separate in their, um, the colorant separates sometimes with them. So shaking them, just like any of the things that we use in resin art besides resin. I don't shake my resin because that would cause a bunch of bubbles, but I shake my colorants. This one was pretty thick, so I just used a little silicone tool that I got from Counterculture DIY and just opened up the cap and stuck the thing in there. And you'll see right now it's not mixing, but once I mix it, you're going to be amazed. So the blue came out nicely. That's the way it should come out. It sunk to the bottom, but again, once we mix, it's going to be vibrant. This one also just was a little thicker and was going to take forever, so I just decided to dip it in. I shook my alcohol ink, but you probably didn't see that on screen because I didn't see that happen. So this is a turquoise, and it's beautiful. Breeze Reese. And alcohol ink with resin does thin your resin so you do not want to use a ton you are gonna alcohol ink makes more clear so you're gonna be able to see through it whereas these other colors and micas are more solid so it depends on what kind of look you're wanting are you wanting something more see-through are you wanting something that is solid and can't see or a combination i love combining I always try to do some sort of combination. So that guy's mixed. I used the same stir stick because the blues and teals were really close together. This one, I am making sure I get solidly to the bottom where that sunk and mixing it with the resin. It's hard to see on the video, but there was like a layer of clear resin on top until I could get it all the way mixed through. And just, I go both directions, trying to make sure that that's mixed through. Looks really good. It's a nice, beautiful color. And I can tell, like, if there's strings and see how you can't really see the stir stick now through that. Whereas we could on the alcohol ink. So again, that colorant was mainly on my stir stick. And now as I start to stir... We are getting it mixed with the resin. I come to the top where some of it stuck to the cup. Try to scrape that off and have it mix. Now this is a lighter color. So you can somewhat see the stir stick. But it's definitely not as clear as the alcohol ink. But I love this color. It's beautiful. And then this one. This one's flamingo color. So this is a shout out to my mom and her love of flamingos. Mm -hmm. And um, those who may or may not have watched my origami crane video. I lost my mom a little over a year ago. She was only 62. She loved flamingos and origami cranes. Which is why I had done that kind of different video. So flamingo color felt fitting for this one so that's all stirred up nice and thick let it sit i'm going to take the heat gun again just do a quick this is on low just a quick shoot over i don't want to put a ton of heat on them but i do want to have some heat pop those bubbles now we're going to do this armor art i've shaken the bottle again it can separate and become pretty thick or runny depending on which way so you want to make sure it's mixed and then I'm just pouring some in there. It looked like I maybe poured a lot in. I really didn't. It just wasn't coming out of the bottle. So then mixing that, and you'll see the resin has it truly mixes and melds with that armor art. Again, another very thick colorant. So you're, plus my stir stick is white, but you wouldn't really be able to see the stir stick through this one because it this is a sinker. So it helps the resin move and it sinks and that's what helps create cells for ocean scenes or cloud scenes and then also the blooming effect which is nice 
this is like a color changing mica greenish blue I wanted to do just a little bit in it just to give a, a different texture basically or it's not even a texture because you can't feel any difference with the resin being so smooth but it gives it a different um, look it gives it like a shimmer look that you don't normally maybe get with the others so I just kind of wanted to do that micas you got to stir in very well because it is a powder so I did not use much because I have a very small resin in this little container and you got to stir it very well because if you don't you will get chunks of powder and then your piece will reflect those chunks of powder and I'm guessing you won't like that because it's something I don't like when you can see those powder pieces. It looks like a flaw in the resin. It, it's just that you didn't mix your mica as well. This is a gold, a sunshine gold mica. Again, was going to use this to <laughs> um, mix to do the center of the flower, but I'll use it again when I actually do the flower molds in the next video so mixing that in again you can see those powder pieces so you can see that I'm just working it in small sections working that resin to combine with the powder so that the powder is not as prominent and is fully mixed so getting that all mixed and beautiful it's all Cleaned up. You'll notice I wipe off my stir sticks on those small ones so that I can set them on my mat. The mat is silicone from Counterculture DIY, so it's an easy clean. I'm not worried about the resin getting on them, on it. And so I am kind of just feeling the bottoms of the cups to feel how warm the resin may or may not be. This day was relatively warm outside, but I did throw on my heater in the workspace just to make sure that my temperature was good and we didn't have a flaw with it. I am going to let this set for a little bit so that it can, I'm not letting it set up in the cups, but what we want is the reaction of the resin to begin more. And we want those bubbles to continue to pull to the top and we want the resin to get a little bit thicker a little bit hotter and then we'll pour it when you do that then your colors don't mix and meld and make a brown it will allow them to stay more separated so I actually switched off the camera moved over let them sit I believe ultimately it was about 20 minutes that they sat I did check them every 5 to 10 just to make sure they weren't too hot if they felt warm then we were getting close to flash curing or something of that nature so I wanted to make sure that they didn't do that again just a quick spot of heat on them not too crazy but to just pop extra bubbles anything that's come to the surface for us and then I didn't have really any rhyme or reason so this is a this mold is a drip bowl from counterculture DIY and I've, this is the first time I've used it, super excited to actually use it. So just kind of with this one, the hardest thing with the plastic cups, they don't squeeze to give you a good pour spout like a paper cup would. Um, but I made, made do, made this work. And so I just poured a little bit around of that color. I know that that's going to be the color that kind of goes into my drips and down to my sides but we got to get more resin in there to push that down so taking my next color and again no particular order per se other than I was trying to choose a really solid to more light and so you can see where the pink begins to come together with that that turquoise blue and kind of make a black what looks like a black ring on the video but it comes out really pretty and then using a little bit of this one this is our alcohol ink and so you'll see how much lighter it truly is this one I was you know going over the pink just a smidge and it's creating a purple which is really pretty so just naturally letting those colors do what they are gonna do and we'll add the 
flamingo in, but I had seen some bubbles, and before that resin went off the edges, I wanted those bubbles to get popped so that they don't get trapped down on the sides. And when using this mold, since this was the first time, you learn a lot. And when I do the unmold, I'll show some things that I would probably do different. And that's all part of the learning process. So pouring some in and basically now I'm just like, okay, we're going to pour in the center and let this just push to the sides and to the bottom. So just pouring to the center. Of course, it's not going to be perfectly centered. Never is, even though I'm supposedly on a flat level surface. <laughs> you end up pouring a little bit too much one way. It's going to shift your resin the other way and things of that nature. So just is what it be. You just roll with it. And this one, I tried to kind of offset some of that. So I moved it over a little bit, which is fine. And I love the cool effect it's getting. There was, again, some bubbles that just, hey, we need to make sure that we pop those. It also heats up your resin a little bit, making it more fluid so that it can start to roll to the edges and do what it needs to to fill in those sides. You can see how clear this resin is, even with the color in it. You can actually see um, reflection. You can see my camera that line that's going through is my camera holder. So that's pretty phenomenal that this resin picks that up. It's just so shiny. That I was just shifting the mold a little bit, allowing it to go down the sides, basically allowing the resin to go down. This was our chameleon mica. Probably could have done something a little different with it. Um, Again, I initially was thinking probably more with the flowers, but by this point I realized I probably am not going to get the flowers filled. I probably don't have enough resin to fill this mold, therefore not enough to do those. So, and that's fine. So I just went ahead and uh, poured that all in, figured it will just mix its way through. The other thing too is when I do flower or coaster molds, I like to use clear resin as a first layer I put clear down in the mold and then I add all of our colorants so that it can bloom well if you had noticed when I sorted out my resin I didn't leave myself any clear so <laughs> I kind of had run into that too and like contemplated while the resin was sitting well maybe I just don't do the coaster molds this round so ultimately that's what happened I got super focused on my colorants and just dispersing the resin that I forgot to leave some clear to put in those molds but it's all good it worked out so here just again we're adding more not going to get like any resin wasted so just trying to scrape off I use silicone stir sticks because the silicone is resistant to the resin so even if it cures on the stick we can scrape off that resin the other thing too is wood stir sticks and I used to use popsicle sticks so don't think that I haven't been there um, and they're fine. You can definitely do them. Let me um, interject here though. Here I'm using that sinker white. I just wanted to get some of that in there but I didn't want to put it too early because I didn't want it to be the first color to the bottom basically. Not putting this in in any kind of thing you can see I'm just swirling it around and it's even swirled more on its own so I just am letting it kind of go in where it goes that way it can start to do its thing with the colors so anyway back to stir sticks I did used to use popsicle sticks and then I had seen an artist use silicone and I thought well that's interesting I like that one you don't have waste because popsicle sticks you can only use them a few times even if you're wiping them off they're going to just end up with resin on them and you can't they're just not great to use and you can end up with sharp edges which could scrape your molds or your cups so anyway that's one issue the other issue is wood is porous so it's going to hold air 
and it's going to create more bubbles, whereas silicone stir sticks create less bubbles because they have silicone and they resist the resin. doesn't mean I don't get bubbles. You can see there's bubbles on there, and I just popped it with the heat gun. So it's not saying you're going to eliminate bubbles. I'm not saying it's the cure-all be-all, but it does help. So that's kind of where I went with that. And Counterculture has these stir sticks, super inexpensive. Um, so what I do is if I'm putting in an order, I typically will look and see, like, do they have any sales on the stir sticks? Do they have anything going on with those? And slowly but surely have built up my stir stick. I think they come in like a pack of three or five, maybe on the small ones, maybe on the big ones, it's two or three. There's some really tall ones. Um, they're almost a little too heavy, so I haven't bought more of those. I only bought one pack, I believe. So I think they came in threes because I think I have three of them. Um, here I am just picking up the mold, moving the resin, letting it shift, trying to make sure that it gets down into all the sides. Also giving a really cool effect in the top of it. These colors the way it blended and made this purple. I'm a purple fan and it came out really pretty with that purple. So, which was unintentional because I used zero purple as y'all saw. So, shifting that around. But back to the stir sticks. So, I've, I've ordered a couple packs of the small ones. The small ones serve me the best just because they work with these little cups and I just like them. They have two different ends. It's great. So that's my story about why I use silicone stir sticks. So now squeezing the sides, lifting up the edges, making sure that resin's not just getting stuck on the lip because it looked like some might be. I am picking this up, dropping it back down on the table. I am not picking it up very far, mind you, just very ever so slightly just to help bounce that, not really bounce, that's not the word, help that resin settle into those edges and into the bottom. That's what I'm trying to do. It also will force bubbles up so that your bottom of the mold hopefully doesn't have a funky spot where a bubble was that then cured and now you have a gap in your resin. So that's something I've seen other artists do and I I assume it's it does what it's supposed to because it's it's helped my process a lot so again now I'm just using resin to fill at this point so whatever resin I had left I'm just throwing in the mold so that white again not going with any rhyme or reason I'm like oh yeah I've got this gold over here let's throw this in at this point and it's pretty thick as you can see it's a little bit harder to get out of the mold or out of the cup but it's coming it's just a little slower and a little thicker it's gonna stick to the cup and it's gonna try to stick to my stick stir stick um but work with it and I got as much as I could and decided that's enough fiddling with it <laughs> because at some point you've just fiddled with it too much and it's just getting thicker the more you work it so then Again, just using whatever resin I have left. No rhyme or reason. I just tried to do some small swirls to have that move. At this point, the resin is getting a lot thicker. So it, it's not moving like it was in the beginning of the pour. And that is fine. And it looks maybe kind of cool. Maybe like a hot mess. I don't know. Depends on your style. And it's never going to stay the same, though, because no matter what, when you do resin, it's going to shift. So even if you think that you have it exactly where you want it, resin's going to move as it cures. So here I'm going to take the heat gun, moving it pretty quickly. I don't want to scorch the resin, but I want to pop any bubbles and I want to give it a little bit of ability to make some movement. This is some... Um, oh goodness, <laughs> alcohol, rubbing alcohol, 
I was wanting to say alcohol ink. I always do that, but I knew that wasn't right. That was some rubbing alcohol just in a, a little like old perfume bottle that was well cleaned out that I use now and put rubbing alcohol in. It does twofold. It's going to help some cells create in the white but it's also gonna pop some bubbles. If there are micro bubbles, it's gonna help pop those. So you can see the white starting to sell. This is a silicone brush I've used in many other projects. It will not damage your molds because it's a soft silicone tip, which I like. So I'm just going through and I'm swirling the white in, mixing the colors. Again, no rhyme or reason because this look isn't even the final look because it's going to shift. It's going to move. It's just going to happen. And I'm just trying to check and make sure those edges and I got to get close to it to see. So you see my head making sure camera's now focusing on my head and glasses. That's nice of it. <laughs> Not the project. It's all good. Um, so just making sure those edges kind of filling in. Going to go with the heat gun here, a little bit slower, make sure on those edges I pop those bubbles, but again, you don't want to scorch your resin and you do not want to melt your mold. I've never, knock on wood, melted a mold, but I've heard horror stories of that, so I'm very conscientious of that and not allowing that to happen. Trying to go kind of sideways, get some of this moving a little bit more. Bring that to make it just move and get movement rolling on it so that it can move and, and create and design. And that's that. So that is part one. I hope to see y'all back for part two.